Okay, welcome to my second video on building an event photography kit from scratch. Today I'm going to be building a Nikon kit. As a reminder, I am going to be following my guide to building a photography kit and I'll be going step one through five and that's it. I'm going through those steps because that's all I really need in order to really feel like I have a complete kit in order to shoot events. Of course, there are more steps to go, but this will make you feel like you have everything you need for 99% of everything you're going to do. So, starting out, the camera choice is going to be pretty easy again. Even though I don't shoot Nikon and I'm not as familiar with Nikon, I know the camera I want. It's basically the, the R6 competitor, and I'm going to go with a Z6 Mark II. Um, the Z6 Mark II is a nice upgrade from the Z6, which wasn't bad. I actually liked that camera. I tried it out. I liked it more than the R, to be honest, and I'm a Canon shooter, um, but the R was just too limited without a joystick for me in my personal style. But I'm going to go with the Z6 Mark II, and I love it already. It's $500 less than the R6. Do I think it's as competitive on the market as the R6? Maybe with that price? but specs, perhaps not. Okay, mirrorless lenses. I'm going to get, of course, my bread and butter lens, and that will be my 24 to 70, like I mentioned in my Canon video. This is going to be a lens I'm going to use for the duration of my career. It's going to be a lens I can use for 90% of the time if I had to. It doesn't mean I want to. And so I'm not going to go with the f4 version. I'm going to go with the f2.8. And as a reminder, the point of this video is to buy everything brand new and see what it would cost. We could find out what it would cost to build a more affordable kit, but that would be a different video. And that is actually what I would recommend if you're just starting out. Okay. Flash. I know nothing about Nikon flash units, and I'm just going to go with the most expensive because that's what I did with Canon, and I think it's worth it. Again, your flash is a workhorse. Just go all out if you can afford it. If you can't afford it, you get what you can and make do with it. The Canon step below the flagship flash, although I guess technically the 600 EXRT2 is not the flagship flash anymore, but the 400 series flash is actually a great performer and I think a good option for you to go with. Um, and so I assume Nikon's lower step down would be fine too, but we're not doing that. We're going all out and we're going to add the flash to cart. I notice it's more money than the Canon. So in, when it comes to the flash, and I think Nikon has always been more, maybe someone who's want more of those like photography historians can tell me if Nikon flash units were always a bit more, I think they may have been. So that was step two. Step three is going, oh, that's step three actually. Step four is going to be to buy um, either a wide angle or the telephoto range lens, and that is going to depend on what you're going to be shooting more of as mentioned in my previous video. Um, so I won't repeat it, but I'm going to, uh, very easy, I'm just going to start in this case with my wide angle. Let's pretend I'll be shooting birthday parties and that kind of thing, smaller venues. And for 1350, uh, I can get a 14 to 30 F4. Um, I've never compared that to the Canon, but I know the Canon does have a larger, wider focal range, I guess, whatever the terminology would be, um, that goes up to 35. Um, so for 350 or more, whatever it is, um, you can get an extra five millimeters of reach. Now, I really don't think that's an issue, by the way. I think 14 to 30 is fine because we are building a kit and I have in my kit a 24 to 70. And so there's an overlap and I, I'm fine with that. I typically use my wide angle lens for very like purposeful stuff. Um, for when I know I'm gonna be shooting really wide groups and when I'm shooting detail shots, I mean, sorry, establishing shots, I don't need it to be this like well-rounded performer to be honest. So we'll, we're good with that. Now we need a 70 to 200, which I think is just the easy choice. I don't think it's worth considering anything like here that's 50 to 250 or anything like that. The, the 70 to 200 is the way to go when it comes to your telephoto. 
if I can find it. Where are you? The thing is, because I'm not familiar with Nikon, it doesn't pop out to me, you know? Like, I recognize Canon gear. Um, where are you, though? Should I buy a Noct? Is that what they're calling it? Yeah. <laughs> $8,000 lens with no autofocus, I believe. No, thank you. Here we go. S-Line, 70 to 200 f2.8 VRS, $2,700. I believe it's 100 less than the Canon. And that's it. That is my Nikon kit. Let's go ahead and take a look at how much that totals out to. Now, I need to calculate tax real quick, so let me do that, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so here's the results. Let's see what I purchased first. I got the Z6 Mark II, $2,000, a 24 70 f2.8 for $2,400, an SB5000 for $600, uh, Nikor, Nikor, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, to be honest, 14 to 30 F4 for 1350 and a 70 to 200 for $2,700. My after-tax cost was $9,909. Let's compare that to Canon. And so we're looking at about a $1,000 difference. So remember the Canon, I had to overpay for a flash for, by $50 if you watched that video. It's actually gonna be very close to $10,800. So $10,800, I'm actually gonna screen cap that and then maybe I can show it side by side. Um, $10,800 versus $9,900. So $900 difference. Do I think that is significant? To some degree, yeah, when you look at it as one lump sum, but if you look at it in a different way, and that is that you're unlikely to be buying this kit all at once. Almost no one does that. You're going to go step by step, probably hopefully following the system I laid out so you're not wasting money. And over five years or so, you'll build out your kit. And over the lifespan of your gear, $1,000 is not a big deal. Now. If you like the Nikon more, you should get the Nikon and save money. Lucky you. But if you like the Canon system more and it's $1,000 more, $900, I, I think you should go for it. You should go for what you like. And that is my main message here. Um, now, next I'm going to be doing Sony. And I feel like Sony is going to be more expensive because people talk about that. Um, but I don't know if that's really going to be the case. I know people talk a lot about how you can save money on Sony if you're buying third-party lenses. But for the sake of this little experiment, um, we're not going to do that. So that will be the next video. Like, subscribe if you're enjoying this content. Um, click the bell if you want to be alerted for when that video drops and all that. And for everyone that's been following my channel, I really appreciate your support. Um, you've all reached out um, a tremendous amount lately, and I appreciate it. Thank you.